Well, uh, I think there are two, thi two things that are meant by the name physicalism. And as I understand it in the analytic philosophy community, people who call themselves physicalists actually deny the existence of consciousness or experience. Uh, sometimes they pretend that they don't, they deny that they deny it. But when you look at the details of what they say, it seems, almost always in the end, it, come, it turns out that they have some kind of reductive program. They, what they want, they still want to reduce the conscious or the experiential to the non-conscious or the non-experiential in some way. So as far as those physicalists are concerned, panpsychism is utterly different. Uh, I sometimes like to call myself a physicalist, but then I immediately have to add something. I have to say I'm a real physicalist. And by that I mean that I'm a complete realist about consciousness, or if I don't really like the word, but about qualia, about experiential what it's likeness. Uh, and I'm really most concerned to, since nearly everyone I talk to is a physicalist, I tend to assume that my opponent, the person I'm talking to, is a physicalist and say, if you want to be a real physicalist, well, you have to be a realist about consciousness because that's the most certainly known phenomenon there is. So you're going to have to go all the way and say that conscious states are themselves literally physical, just like electric charge. And when I say conscious states, I don't mean anything reductive in any sense. I mean the thing that the, the so-called qualia freaks believe in, right? So the real thing, the real thing that we all know about and that we all know to exist until, unfortunately, some of us do philosophy and decide that it doesn't exist after all.